Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the January meeting of COSI, the Community Officers Association of Singer Island. Today, we are hosting Dr. Julie Botel for her annual State of the Island Address. Our president, Mike Slozer, will give the introduction. Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Slozer. I'm president of COSI, the Community Officers Association of Singer Island. And we have developed an annual tradition of having a state of the island report. Our representative, Julie Botel, is here today. Um, I believe she has a slide presentation and a lot of information. So we, we're anxious to hear it and I'm anxious to stop talking. So Julie, it's all yours now. Thank you so much, Patty, Mike, Kathleen. It's so good to be with you again. Let me start my slideshow. Here we go. Can you see it all right, Patty? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Yes. Okay, so I, I wanna begin, I'll tell you a little bit, get through this agenda listing pretty quickly. This is what I'm gonna talk about this morning. And if I, as I'm speaking, you think of anything else, oh, let me go back to that again, it was too quick. If you think of anything else that you'd like me to address, I'll be happy to do that, especially the, the COVID testing that's there. So I got a report from our legal department because I know that everybody is always interested in what's going on on the water here on, on Singer Island. And many people ask me about the light poles that were cut down. Our outside council is reviewing Viewing information provided to the city by FDOT to determine whether its survey accurately reflects where the light poles are placed. There was some question as to whether they were placed on private property or on FDOT property, so our legal department is looking at that. The city has submitted its proposal, proposed final orders to the special magistrate on the halo fence and is awaiting release of that order. That's the fence that goes along Pine Point, so we're still waiting, waiting for, on that. Uh, the Department of Justice and Mr. Lozman entered into an agreement that requires Mr. Lozman within 60 days of the court's order endorsing the stipulation to apply for a permit with the Army Corps of Engineers. You may have seen an article lately in the Palm Beach Post about this, and many people were concerned and upset that something dr dramatic was going to happen. That's not the case, not to worry. Uh, this, is, this is in progress, not finished. Uh, and the, the, uh, he, Mr. Lozman wants to ins install some pilings to moor the structure uh, in the Lake Worth Lagoon. Uh, Mr. Lozman expressed that he intends to turn the structure into a vessel and register it. Uh, the court put the case in abeyance, requiring a status every six months. If it remains a floating structure, he must abide by both the county and city ordinances as it relates to where he can moor. It can be moored in a permitted mooring field if in the city waters, it's currently located in the waters off of North Palm Beach, not Revere Beach. It's very hard to tell out there. When you just take a look, and those of you who are looking from high rises down onto the structure, it does look like it's in Revere Beach waters. It's not, it's in North Palm Beach. And North Palm Beach actually ticketed the structure some time ago, and then Mr. Lozman moved it, uh, but it is still in North Palm Beach waters and they may ticket it again. We, we are wait to see that. With regard to the wall, uh, many of you also call me regularly about when that wall will be coming down. Uh, just so you know, the Department of Transportation sent a letter to Mr. Taylor. The wall is on FDOT right of way, not on his property. So there are ongoing discussions with FDOT and the city attorney. Uh, Mr. Taylor has not submitted anything in response to the city's clear direction for obtaining a permit for the structures. And the city intends to seek relief from court from the court in order to proceed with its code compliance ruling. So that's also a work in progress and we will not, um, we're not gonna ignore that. Uh, on to derelict boats, another important topic for those of us who live on the island. Lagoon keepers, now you know there's a difference between derelict boats and floating structures. A derelict boat is one that can't move around. It's, it's, uh, it, and it's not just that something looks ugly. You know, sometimes we look at something, it's not the prettiest, but it may not be derelict. So there's a, there's a difference between something that's a floating structure, a derelict boat, and just something that's ugly. But Lagoon Keepers, with whom we work regularly, has removed 11 derelict and abandoned boats, as, and that was as of November, and four more were scheduled for removal by year's end. They do an outstanding job. Uh, Greg Reynolds and, and Lagoon Keepers really stay on top of this, and they get grant money Money to do this because it's very expensive to remove these things from the water, but they keep at it. Floating structures. Now these are, as we know, Mr. Lozman has one, a, a, a structure that's um, a floating structure, a structure that's on, on something that will allow it to be moved around. Uh, 
the city council unanimously passed a floating structures ordinance, and this prohibits floating structures in any waters of the city, including privately owned uplands. So we will not be seeing any floating structures in our waters. It looks now, if you look out uh, as you cross the bridge, you may say, gee, there's still a lot of stuff out there. Well, if it's out there, it means that it's not in Riviera Beach waters. It's in county waters. And what we need to do is consider applying to asking the county, asking the commission uh, if they will put some money behind the ordinance that they passed. So Palm Beach County passed an ordinance about floating structures, but unfortunately they, they didn't say, okay, here's the amount of money that we're gonna put toward removing them. So we've got to ask uh, nicely if the county would put some money behind that ordinance so that we can remove them. It's very expensive to remove these things from the waters. And we also need to consider increasing our marine unit budget because of the costly nature of the removal. Wanted to give you a little bit of an update on some public works projects that have been going on. The fire station will not be at the Ritz. So those of you listening from the Ritz or nearby, it's not gonna go where it had been proposed by staff to go right there on the beach, that won't happen. The wastewater main from the island to the mainland, we have secured an agreement from a property owner on this side to begin that wastewater and that will be uh, a duplicate. So we have some backup because the original wastewater uh, main um, is, is just sitting on the bottom. And it's it, if that gets disrupted in any way, gets broken in any way, we're, we're up the creek, as they say. Uh, the Palm Beach Isles bridges, I think I have a slide with these coming up. The Palm Beach Isles bridges are well near completion. And I'm happy to say that was a multi, multi million dollar project. And it really does look beautiful. I just went over there yesterday to take the pictures and, uh, and it looks great. Uh, landscaping on North Ocean Drive. This will be the only topic on my town hall that's coming up on January 20th. So the town hall will be televised as well as in person. We'll do a hybrid meeting. Um, uh, unless COVID gets much worse and then it will only be <laughs> virtual. But I, I'm hoping that we can do a hybrid meeting where some people will be there in person and we'll be giving options for the landscaping so that we can get input from the community as to what they would like to see, what you would like to see uh, on the landscaping on North Ocean Drive. Uh, the water treatment plant will be fenced in and, uh, in within 30 days. I also have some pictures coming up for you about that. So that's well on its way. And it, oh, here it is right now. So. These were the designs that uh, council looked at just to give you an idea of what it could look like over there. And it's it's really going to be a beautiful structure and a state of the art water treatment plant. And they're telling us that it, it'll be constructed in a couple of years, not five years like we originally thought. So I'm very excited about this because we know that our drinking water doesn't look the best. We know it's safe to drink. We know that it's it's okay, but it's that color issue. And, and that apparently all of South Florida has that color issue. So this treatment that we're going to apply to the water will take care of all that. It will be pristine state-of-the-art water treatment plant that will give us really good quality, high quality water. Here's that picture I promised of the Palm Beach Isles bridges, as you can see, well, well near, near completion. And, and it was a long time coming. We're happy that the residents over there participated in many discussions about what it should look like. And, and I hope and believe that it's up to the standards that they requested. Now on to the marina. These are older slides that I've shown you in the past, but I wanted to show them to remind you of some of the things that are potentially gonna happen at the marina. But I have some questions for you. I would like to know, would you like to see workforce and affordable housing at the marina? Because that's something that's been proposed. Or would you like to see market rate high-end condominiums at the marina? Do you think we need a hotel? How many restaurants do we need there? What kind of parking? Email me at jbotel at rivierbeach.org. Please, I want to know your opinion about what we should be doing at the marina. We've had a proposal from the developers and we're in negotiations. And I just would like to hear from the constituents to say, what do you wanna see there? What do you think should go at our beautiful marina? And the same thing is true of the Sands Hotel. There it is, right there in all its glory. Uh, that was the Sands Hotel site and the, proposed, uh, the proposal. I want to know, would you like to see more parking at the beach? I think the answer to that is going to be overwhelmingly yes. But would you object to a 20-story building at that site if it provided the necessary parking? Again, please email me with your opinions about this. I want to know how this community feels about having a high rise at that site if it gets rid of the sands and puts some more parking in. Please, please let me know your opinion. 
this is one of the most, to me, the most exciting things that's happening. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at the Nautilus project up in Lake Park, but it is a stunning project. This, these are some pictures of it. As you can see, the units range from 647 to $3.3 million in Lake Park. So, and there's a picture of the, the finished, um, what it will look like when it's finished. Nautilus 220 is going to be a luxury, luxury uh, constructed project and it will have restaurants and retail spaces it will bring a huge benefit to the tax base in lake park the good news is they're moving to riviera beach they have arranged to take the old winn dixie site and they're going to have something similar to this right in riviera beach so we'll be having some beautiful beautiful new uh, apartments condos and hotels etc right up there where the winn dixie was so i'm very excited about that a little about our community garden. These pictures were taken yesterday. You can see the benches are in. Many people are harvesting tomatoes and basil and all kinds of stuff. It's been really exciting. But there, and I believe there are still beds left to be rented. I know Kathleen has one and Kathleen's family. I've run into them, ran into them a couple of times over there at the garden. And so I know she's enjoying the garden. Uh, we welcome you to uh, contact me again or JB Dixon if you're interested in renting a bed or uh, using the garden for any purpose. But it is is a beautiful site, certainly much nicer than what it used to be, the old junky uh, lot that was there. This is also a really exciting development. Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville is partnering with Bahama Paradise Cruise Lines. They're going to put $20 million in to renovate that ship. And I, the picture on the lower left shows what it will look like when it, when it becomes Margarita at Sea. Uh, there will be, of course, a, uh, a hotel on the other side that will be branded Margaritaville over in Grand Bahama. And of course, I would love to see uh, Margaritaville uh, on this side as well, so that people could come and have the experience of staying in Riviera Beach, then getting on the ship, going to the other side, staying over there, coming back and perhaps staying again in Riviera Beach. But we're really excited about this uh, happening. Uh, we just made this announcement about two weeks ago, and it was uh, just so much fun to meet the people from Margaritaville and learn about this. So very excited. Wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you to the Secret Santas of Singer Island. Many of your condominiums and HOAs participated in this drive. Uh, Friends of the Riviera Beach Schools was the beneficiary of the Secret Santa dollars. The donations went to the Friends, and the Friends purchased the gifts for about 150 children over at Stony Brook, which is now called Azure Estates. But if you could have seen, and look at how beautifully they wrapped them. Everything had a beautiful bow, and I, I, it was just a great, great endeavor. We must have had, we had dozens and dozens of volunteers from all over the island helping with this project, and I wish I could have captured the joy on the faces of some of those children at Stony Brook to share that with you. Uh, I think that J.B. Dixon might have put some pictures on Facebook, but um, it was it was great fun, and I, I can't thank you enough. We will do it again next year because it was so successful. We actually, what we did was we asked the kids to write a letter to Santa, and they had to say three things that they wanted, and the things were supposed to be under $50. Well, some kids must not know the value of a bicycle because 25 of them asked for bikes. And we said, you know what? Let's just get them the bikes because bicycles are a way out of, of a community, a way to maybe go to the library or stay after school and, and participate in after school activities. So we wanted those kids to have bikes if they wanted them. So we got them. Um, so we'll, we'll be doing it again next year. And I hope even more people are able to participate with us. Want to let you know that on June 8th, 2022, we'll be celebrating World Oceans Day. We, we started last year, we had a small celebration on June 8th, and I have a team of people working on this, this coming uh, World Oceans Day. We're probably gonna do a week's worth of activities uh, around the June 8th date, and uh, hope to see many of you come out for that, for those events, because we are an oceanfront community and we need to revitalize, preserve, protect our ocean, and uh, we'll have all kinds of speakers and activities that will help us celebrate along with United Nations World Ocean Day. 
As I said earlier, the quarterly Singer Island Town Hall will take place on January 20th at six o'clock. We'll be at the Ambassador Center, which many of you know is over there on East Blue Heron. Uh, it will be in person and virtual. And the only topic will be the medians on North Ocean Drive. Uh, if you would like to participate virtually, please email Sam Brown and he will be sure that you're on a list for uh, the invitations. And I, and I hope that you do participate because I want as many people as possible to weigh in on what our medians should look like. Um, there's one gentleman that every time I see him, he says, what are we going to get a sign at the north end of North Ocean Drive welcoming you to Riviera Beach? So that's another thing that I promise that will be on the agenda, whether we should have a sign up there at the north end. Uh, we have some elections coming up. As you may know, we have the House District 20 special election. That was Alcee Hastings' seat, and it's going to be January 11th. I hope that if you do your uh, ballots by mail, you've already gotten it. I, I had gotten mine quite some time ago and, and sent mine in. Uh, so it's important that we that we vote in that election, as well as a municipal election that's coming up in March. We have three city council seats up, districts one, three, and five, and the mayor. So it's very important that you uh, come out and vote in that municipal election. Election day is March 8th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's Tuesday. Please, please come out and vote. Uh, and thank you. I, I do want to add a couple of things that I didn't have on the slides about COVID, as Patty and, and um, Mike mentioned earlier. We are giving out free COVID tests. Uh, the line is probably pretty long over there at um, uh, uh, Callaway Park, but uh, uh, you know, I encourage you, they're going to be doing that until two o'clock. So if you want a free COVID test, they're limiting them to two per family, but uh, they are over there. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. I think uh, I've covered everything I promised to cover. If you have any questions, this is the time and let me know. I'm going to stop sharing my screen.